So recently I treated myself with a new handgun um, and it is a little different in size. So if you guys remember this EDC box I made a few years ago to hide my pistol, doesn't work anymore. So we need to make a new one and I've got a pretty cool idea I think to step it up a notch. Let's get to it. All right, so I want this thing to be more like a desk organizer. I personally have a lot of crap on my desk and I want this thing to be hidden. So I'm thinking I need to keep my note cards and my post-its and then some pens on the desk. So we're gonna kind of just base the size of it on that. If we make the inside of our box roughly eight and a half by six, I should be able to fit all the stuff I want with some with a quarter inch kind of inset. <clears throat> we're gonna go with this, like a similar look to this, walnut and maple. Spice it up a bit with some carving though. That's where we're gonna get the oohs and the ahs. Um, so let's get to milling some wood and a little bit of lamination. And now we make it a sandwich. So what I'm going for here is I'm gonna do some carving and I wanna create this laminated spot in between. So when I carve into her, you can see the difference in the insides. So let's laminate. So because most of you don't have a CNC, and a lot of you like to try these projects, we're gonna do this thing on the bandsaw. So essentially, same way as I did the last one, we're just going to trace the shape of the gun, and then cut the outline. If you're wondering, this is a Springfield Hellcat, the optics ready version, hence why it has the optic. Pretty cool gun, super slim profile, it's like a subcompact, carries pretty nice. Really thin, less than an inch. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, let's uh, take this over the bandsaw and relief the part where the gun's gonna be. Okay, so check it out. Don't fit, why? We suck at tracing. No, because I wanted it to be tighter, because I think I'm gonna flock this son bitch. So, Fits. Now, we're gonna glue up the seam, and then we'll get to making this thing purdy. All right, so this stuff's set up. Now we're gonna mill these things down. We're gonna get our box kind of, I don't know, mocked up or glued up. I'm gonna figure out how I wanna do that still. But we need a square lumber before we do Well, I'm a jackass. Basically, I intended on flipping the parts to make sure that everything aligned properly because I left the outside thicker so I could carve more, but then I didn't flip them. So now the miters don't match up because, yeah, so un momento, por favor. Gotta put a bottom in the top. That one I just kind of glued it in there because I'm a savage. And it's held up, ironically. This time though, we're gonna do plywood so we're not dealing with any expansion problems inside of it, little quarter inch dado cut here along the inside, and then we'll get this thing glued up. The box dried and didn't explode apart. So next thing I wanna do, cause I'm antsy and I'm a child, it would probably be intelligent to make this box and make it size and then make it you know, press fit and all that, but that's no fun. I'm gonna start carving this guy. So to do so, I'm gonna mount it in my ridiculously awesome table saw and then start drawing lines on it. That's the bench uh, you call it a table saw? Yeah, I had a lot of caffeine this morning. Not the good kind. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I wanna go with like a natural, you wanna come over here? So I'm gonna try to follow the grain slightly and I've never done something that like this. John, that's literally not how the grain goes at all. Shh, shut your mouth. But the problem is, I don't literally freaking know what the shape I'm going for is. So 
So I think the initial shape is, is close in that it's, uh, it needs a lot of work still. But like I'm, I'm pretty much going for something organic that's just flowy. The ArborTech turboplane, great for moving stuff quickly. We're switching over to the more of a abrasive disc and these are made by Cutsall. Um, and, and this should let me be a little slower and refine, refining that shape, I'm not taking out so much, so. Back to the grind, literally. I think I've got all the general carving done. Now I'm going to come in with these are these are some pretty badass files that Cutsall makes. And then start refining it. You guys can see I started over here and it's given the I'm just softening the shape. I'm making this up as I go. And that's one of that's one of the things I really enjoy about power carving is that it's kind of like it's like a friggin' experiment every time because it's just a matter of how far you want to go with it. And, uh, and I enjoy that. So we're gonna keep working on this shape. It's looking funky, it's looking cool. I like it, if you don't, keep it to yourself. Oh, Sam. There's walnut everywhere. And uh, yeah, we'll go from here and then we'll start sanding um, and then we'll start working on the rest of the parts for this, this sucker. So rough shaping, I think is done. Next phase is the con, I think this is like their contour sander from Cuts All. Should help to uh, make this thing look even smoother and more sexy. And then we keep the weirdness moving forward. on where the hell did the bottom go this hickama jiggy is now good so i'm gonna give it a little sanding just smooth it out a bit and then we're gonna glue the bottom back on so i took some of the leftover maple that was in the construction of our hickama jiggy <clears throat> what i'm gonna do now I'm gonna fit the interior parts. I got my like tiny parts cross cut sled on. And then I'll just cut the two widths. Proud. See they're just they're super, super tight. Huh? And then put them on this extremely convenient shooting board. So the reason I shoot these in, so see how that's a little long? Can you get that tight? It is much easier to just take a little off. And try again, than it is to try and cut it once on the table saw. Those are both butthole tight. So I need to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with the rest of it. So I'm gonna glue these in because I think the way I want to do it is going to end up being a little different than what I initially thought. Because I'm a jack wagon and I change everything as I go. that way. Very close. Some may say that's a press fit. So it is all put together and I'm not gonna lie, 
I thought I wanted to do dividers and something for like specific items, but I really do love a catch-all. So I might, I don't know. I'm gonna put some finish on it first. But before we even get to any of that, we gotta make sure it works. So here's the thing. Oh, nice press fit. If I pick it up with one hand, the bottom comes up with it. It's freaking magic. But if you pick it up perfectly, Uh -huh. So, it's almost better than the last one because it's not as obvious, I think. I think that's pretty slick. So, a little bit more sanding and we're gonna get some finish on this thing. And then, <gasps> be right! Like that. I'm sweating. And now, as we always do, we thank Ron for showing up today. Thanks, Ron. And now, let us spray. turned out pretty awesome, I have to admit. What do you guys think about it? Uh, it was kind of like an organic-ish artistic interpretation of my previous box, but it works beautifully. Slight pivot on the design. If you guys are interested in my old one, I've got that queued up for you right here. We can jump and go watch that one together. You can see how terrible my old videos used to be. And if you want to support the channel, we've got some awesome merch available. Check it out. Link down in the description. If you like the pew pew pew, I've got all of those in a playlist for you right here. Check them out. See you guys in the next one.